Honestly, this thing is a game changer. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Georgina, co-owner of Ivy and Twine Candles, and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And as you'll have seen from the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking you through some great tools and pieces of equipment which will really help you if you are just getting started in your candle making journey or if you're just looking to step up your game a bit. I will be leaving links to all of these products in the description box below if you would like to check them out. However, just as a little disclaimer, there will be affiliate links in there, which means that for every product purchased, I will earn a small commission. However, that doesn't affect the price on your end. Ultimately, it just means you will be supporting my channel if you do use any of those links. So thank you in advance to anyone who does. Before we get started though, I'd just like to ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I post videos every Tuesday, however be sure to click the little bell if you would like to be notified when I do post a new video. And be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you do enjoy this video so more like-minded people can see it. So first up today, and probably most importantly, is my 3 litre metal jug. And I have one of these here to show you. Now obviously it doesn't actually hold three litres of hot wax, but from this container I can get about 15 candles worth. So it's a really great size. If like me, in the beginning you're using the bain-marie or double boiler method, this jug is also perfect for that because it actually has a heat resistant handle, which I think is made of plastic, but it is heat resistant. So it just means you're not going to be potentially burning your hand when you're taking it out of the pot or pan that you're using. Next up is my trusty buffalo soup kettle. So if you are currently using the double boiler method to melt your wax, you might be looking at ways that you can increase the amount of candles that you can make at any one time. So it was actually a couple of months into my candle business that I bought my first soup kettle after seeing a recommendation in a Facebook group that I'm in. And I now have two, and if I'm honest, I'm actually tempted to buy myself another one if it wasn't for the fact that I am still working from my kitchen in my house, and obviously space is a bit of an issue, then I probably would have already bought myself another one. They are, in my opinion, the best thing for melting your wax. At the time I bought my first one, I believe they were only about £40, but I think they may have gone up slightly. But there's 10 different heat settings, and once I get it to the right temperature using my thermometer, I just put it down to one or two, and then it keeps it at that temperature for me, which is perfect. Next up on my list of must-haves is my digital meat thermometer that I use, and I actually have two of these. And I spoke about this in my how to get better hot throw video, which you may have seen, and if you've not, I will leave a link to that in the description box below as well for you to have a look at. So these thermometers are digital and they come with a probe which I leave in my soup kettle whilst the wax is heating up and then it actually has an alarm on it which when it obviously gets up to that temperature it lets off a really quite annoying but helpful um, alarm sound so that no matter where I am in the house or even if I'm out in the garden let's say I can hear it going off and I know that I have to come in and turn down the thermostat obviously to stop it going above that temperature. Next up are the wick centering tools that I use. Now obviously there are so many ways that you can actually centre your wicks and I've seen people use things like clothes pegs or pencils and when you are very first getting started obviously it could be tempting to just use things that you already have in your house. However from my experience they can move around a lot when your candles are setting and obviously you don't want that. However with these because of the different grooves that it has it means it can actually fit uh, several different sizes of jars and it stops the wick from moving around at all. So I have bought so many of these myself. I probably have about 100 of these downstairs currently and I think they're great value for money. If you've ever come back to your candles once they're set and you find that there are wicks that are completely off centre and the candle's basically unsellable then you will relate. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Okay, next I want to talk to you about this bad boy, which is my piston funnel. So this is something which would normally be used by bakers, I believe. However, it is perfectly suitable for using with your candle making when you're pouring your wax into your jars or vessels. Honestly, this thing is a game changer. And I actually can't believe that when I'd not long started, I was pouring my wax into my jars just from a jug like this like just freehand and I would make so much mess. There would be wax like around the top of the candle jar and dribbling down the side of it and then all over my work surfaces which was just a nightmare to clean up and I found that after my candles had set I would have to go back like the next day and 
clean up the outsides of the jars basically with like a hot cloth and it just took an age. So honestly if that's you just do yourself a massive favour and get yourself a funnel because it will make your life so much easier. In terms of using it it's obviously pretty self-explanatory but it does come with this handy stand so you can obviously pop it in there um, whilst you're adding your fragrance oils or you're waiting for your wax to get down to the right temperature to pour it um, and then you just push it down uh, to release the wax out of the bottom but honestly I love it so much it's just Next up is my scales. Now, I know I've said it before, but whenever you're taking any measurements in candle making, whether that is a temperature or the weight of your wax and your fragrance oils, it is so important to get those things accurate. And that's because it's not only the difference between an average candle and an amazing candle, but also it's the difference between a candle being safe to burn and not being safe to burn. So it's not something to be taken lightly pun intended. <laughs> so for your oils, whether you're using fragrance oils or essential oils, I would recommend using a set of scales like this one, which are actually called pocket scales because they are so small, but they are actually accurate to 0.01 of a gram, which makes them perfect for measuring out your oils, especially if you're only making small batches and then obviously you're only going to be using a small amount of fragrance oil or essential oils. So this just means that you are still going to be getting um, accurate readings. And then obviously for weighing your wax, you're going to need something a little bit bigger than those scales. So here are the scales which I use. They are still digital and they are very accurate, which is of course what you need. And what I like about these ones specifically is the number on the display stays around for a good length of time. And there is also a plastic screen covering the display, which obviously protects it in the likely event that any wax is spilled on the scales. Another tool which I'd recommend if you are a beginner to candle making is a heat gun. And this is the one which I use here. And it's great for going over and smoothing any uneven finishes on your candles. And I wanted to include this one just because I know it's not a groundbreaking um, tool or discovery when it comes to candle making. However, when you first do a Google search for heat guns, you will probably be met with kind of industrial size heat guns, which can be priced anywhere from 30 to 50 to 100 pounds. So I just wanted to highlight the fact that it is 100% not necessary to spend that much on a heat gun. This one cost me about 15 pounds and it's great. I've had it for well over a year and it does the job to be honest. One thing I will say though is to just be careful when you are using it. You don't want to be using it too close obviously to the candle surface or else you might have wax kind of splashing up and over your candle jars. So just make sure that you're using them a good distance away from your candle jars and that you're using them in a circular motion as well rather than just keeping them on one place. Next up are my wick pads, also known as stickums. But these are what I use to attach my wicks to the bottom of my candle jars. I've used various different things in the past, like glue dots or hot glue gun, but personally I just find this is the easiest way for me to attach my wicks to my jars. I've never had any issues, touch wood, of wicks not staying adhered to the jars using this method um, and it's also just the easiest for me. I don't need to pull out a hot glue gun every time that I'm making my candles. I can simply just take off the paper side of one of these and then attach the wick to the jar. I have bought these ones specifically from Candle Shack. They are just the best size for me for my wicks and they just come in this really handy roll of stickers. However, I will leave a link below to these exact ones as well as ones which I have previously bought from on Amazon because I know that that is often times the most convenient way for you to get your supplies. And finally we have our silicone mats, which again are really generally used by bakers I believe. So they don't tend to come up in search results when you are looking for candle making equipment or tools per se, but these are so handy and will save you so much time and effort when it comes to cleaning up after candle making. And this is obviously so important if like me, you are still making candles in your kitchen at home. They are heat resistant, so obviously you don't need to worry about putting your jugs with your hot wax on them they will be fine and for me they just clean up so much easier than my kitchen worktops ever did 
So guys, that is it for today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it and you found it useful, especially if you are a beginner to candle making. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below and as I said before, be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it so YouTube knows to show it to other people like you. And be sure to go over and follow us on Instagram at Ivy and Twine Candles and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!